Hi, that is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. We are going to introduce another stock list. It seems like it's been very popular and uh, we have done the dividend list, we have done the most profitable list and today we are going to do this value growth list and I'm going to give you this complete list and the link is in the comment box. You can actually go ahead and download and you can get the full list uh, and you can do your own filtering if you want. So especially good for value investors. Okay, Value investors who, who like those kind of uh, undervalued stocks uh, yet they have exhibit some growth. Okay, so I call it a value growth uh, stocks in this case. And the inspiration, of course, came from Buffett in the sense, and also my personal own experience. Okay, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Um, so for Buffett, he said that the growth and value investing are joined in the heat. Okay, it's just that in recent years, I realized that that's not really true. Uh, for that style of investing, right, it has deviated a lot from what Buffett has been preaching. So a lot of growth investors will profess themselves as those uh, buying high growth stocks. They not may not be making money, may not be profitable. They are trading at high uh, PS ratio, like more than 10 times, 20, 30 times PS ratio. Um, that is that how growth investing has evolved into. And for value investors, they are more classical. They are more Benjamin Graham style, paying pennies for the dollars, right? If the company is worth uh, $2, they are paying like $1 for the share, so it's uh, undervalued in a sense. Okay, So that also has some drawback in the sense that uh, when you try to pick the cheap stocks or the super undervalued stocks, you tend to get a lot of junks. Okay? Really, they are deserving to be cheap. Um, and they can also be value traps that never recover in price after a long time. So it will not be uh, enabling the investors to sell for profit. So therefore, uh, combining them makes a lot of sense. Okay? And that's what we're going to do in this screen. I'm going to explain to you what are some of the screening criteria that's being used and of course why right? they were being structured this way. So let's talk about the growth part first. Um, uh, we do want some of these value stocks to exhibit growth. Why? Because for value stocks to move out in price, they usually require certain catalysts okay, or certain events like merger and acquisition, delisting offers. Uh, there must be a reason why the share price is jumping up. Um, and a lot of all these events are not uh, predictive, right? very, very hard to predict when they will happen. If, for example, you are an insider, you know that a merger or acquisition is coming for the company, you can't act on it if you act on it, it's insider information. So therefore, a lot of all these uh, value unlocking event is not useful, right? It, it just come as a surprise if there is. Otherwise, the price gets stuck. But there is another way that's more reliable to make sure that the value eventually get unlocked and that is the internal organic growth of the company. Because as time goes by, if the company is able to grow sustainably over a long period of time, they need not be very fast growth rate. Maybe just 10 plus percent growth uh, is considered quite good and you can sustain that uh, growth rate in the teens, they would have worth a lot more in the future. Right? They could have increased the earnings, increased the dividends and therefore that uh, price, share price improvement will come in. So buying value stocks that have this growth element uh, is important. How are we going to select this growth uh, criterion? And this is why I did for the screen. I look at both the revenue as well as the free cash flow. And the reason why I wanted to look at the free cash flow is because revenue number is taken from the income statement, which is a accrual way of accounting for most companies. That means uh, it may not be backed by cash. Okay? They may have sold the product, but they may not re receive the cash. So I don't want that. And therefore, I bring in the free cash flow in, uh, which is a, a cash flow statement uh, element in it, but you need to calculate actually. And with that, uh, we will have both of these numbers to tally. Right? We want to see both growth. Okay? One for the revenue, one for the free cash flow. And they should grow at least uh, 10% uh, per year over the last five years. So that's how I set the growth criteria. And the second criteria, which is value criterion, is the most important. There are many different ways to value a stock. Okay? But in order for us to do screening, we cannot apply different rules for different stock. It's too tedious. And therefore, we use a very generic one. There are a few good value uh, financial ratios that we can use. But the best that I've uh, observed so far is this free cash flow U. But this free cash flow U is special. right? Usually, when you talk about free cash flow U, most people will think that you are dividing the free cash flow by the share price or the market capitalization. But in this case, we are using a free cash flow divided by enterprise value. And this is a more robust number because enterprise value will consider the debt in the company, will consider the cash that the company have. So there are more parameters and therefore it's a more robust one, better than market capitalization. And inspiration came from the Pacer uh, cash cow ETFs. Okay, they do use this as a key metric and those ETFs have been performing well. So I also wanted to just borrow that idea uh, 
uh, with this free cash flow yield. So I rank all the stocks. Okay, there are actually 13,000 stocks that I rank them uh, across uh, US, China, Hong Kong, Singapore. Right, so I rank them from uh, for, for this uh, ratio and I discard the bottom 80%. So I only keep the cream of the crop and this 20% are the most undervalued stock by this metric across the universe. Okay, so that is how I use the value criterion. And the third one is that we also want quality stock, right? Because sometimes the stock may grow for a period of time, then they may just fizzle out their growth. Um, they may be cheap for a reason, and usually if they're cheap, they are lousy companies. Okay, so I do demand some of the quality businesses to be surfaced. Anyway, I have so many stocks, 30,000 stocks, I can afford to filter more things, right? So I decided that, hey, you know, we, of course, investors will find more comfort in uh, investing in this kind of uh, more higher quality companies, better margins, etc. So the quality criterion, what I used was this gross profitability, which is based on the research of uh, Robert Noby Marx. You can go and read about it if you want. So this is one of the better quality metric. And I also, same thing, rank the 13,000 stock based on this metric, and I discard the uh, bottom 80%. Okay, so it's a multiple ranking system and these companies tend to be asset light, higher margin business. Okay, so it will be a bit skewed, it will be a bit disadvantageous to property companies, it will be disadvantageous to banks and financials. Okay, uh, as I said, it's very difficult to uh, use uh, standardized screen for all because uh, there are uh, different businesses that you should look at it differently. But we can't afford to have customized uh, ratios for certain sectors. So we will apply across the board. But later I'll show you that actually diversification by sectors is still reasonable. And the, another thing is the consistency of growth. right? So this is like the last criterion of uh, what we have discussed so far. Uh, why is this important? Because I don't want a company that grow one year, then come down one year, grow another year, then uh, growth rate slows another year. So it's maybe very lump, lumpy or uh, inconsistent businesses or cyclical industries so i try to have that consistency that means that the quality of growth is also good right so this would need to be eyeball right so this out of so many criteria this is the most subjective one and uh, that means that i have to look through every single stock and look at their uh, revenue growth over the past five years their free cash flow growth over the past five years how did they go up okay? they must have the general uptrend and not swing wildly okay? so in order for you to understand let me give you some examples so this is a negative example. So this is Aura Sure. This is listed in the US. You can see that um, prior to December 2023, they had three consecutive years of negative free cash flow. Okay. Prior to that, yeah, they're growing some, uh, growing quite well. But then after that, the KPS increased. Of course, there could be some valid reasons. Maybe they're preparing for growth, etc. But again, we are doing an initial screen. Therefore, uh, this kind of profile is not something that we want. A good profile will look something like this. This is Antara listed in Hong Kong, and you can see that there's a general uptrend for both its revenue as well as uh, free cash flow. Yes, it's not every year they grow, but uh, most of the year they grew, and there is this general trend that we're looking for. Okay, so that is how I additionally use this uh, uh, eyeball feature <laughs> to filter out stocks that have this consistency of growth. So all in all, after that, I did the filtering, I select the top 50, and I also went to look at the sectors because I wanted to make sure that these 50 stocks do have a good representation from different sectors. And indeed, that's true, it covered nine sectors, some more than the others, right? We can see there's a huge consumer discretionary of 30% exposure. Um, but I do think that it is because of uh, this group of stocks that have not been doing well due to the high inflation that we've experienced for the past two years. And therefore, um, the value metric will rank very high, right? Because they are cheap okay, compared to the rest of the stocks in other sectors. Uh, but that's it. You can also see some other major sectors, communication services, healthcare, IT, consumer staples are a big representation in this uh, portfolio, right? So hopefully this will give you some idea about how it will form up. And uh, last but not least, right? I'm going to give you this... Uh, list of uh, screen results right where I filtered 13,000 stocks right down to just 50 that will meet value growth quality uh, metrics that you can use to look at and find some of the stock ideas from this list. How are going to get it? I have uh, inserted the link in the description box. You can click on it and you can just download, right? Uh, send it over to your email. And there are uh, 35 US stocks, 24 China, Hong Kong stocks, and one Singapore stock. Okay, that is a reflection of how small the Singapore market is. Uh, and the other two markets are a lot larger. Right? So you can choose a pick, you can look through the list, do some homework, do some due diligence. I hope you find something useful for you. And thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.